We've dropped in to see Greg from Key Precision in Cannock. Now, you've bought a Citizen, let me get to right, L32 Type 8 with LFE, but it's caused you a bit of a problem. Why? The uh, big problem is we can't get enough bars on it. Um, this particular component we've, uh, we've started making, we used to do five at a time. With a few tweaks, we managed to get to 50, and now we can do 500 without you know, lights out. So uh, the bar feed's running out before we have a chance to stop the machine. I mean, in respect, it's a great bar feed, though, just to clarify yeah, that. A brilliant bar feed, really robust. Yeah, so it changes every time, which is what causes the problem. Right, so let's just have a quick look at this component. So what, what are you actually doing with it, and how's it working? Uh, yeah, so this is a component, which is a, it's a bearing retainer um, out of 7075 aluminium. It's got a 10 micron tolerance down the length of this part, so we, we had originally planned uh, traffic ground, but because of the LFV uh, and the consistency of the machine, we actually took that operation out um, so we're managing to drop it off finished uh, in one go. Right, so just clarify, 10 microns all the way down? 10 microns, yeah, down the diameter there, yeah. Now this is an L32, but you're actually running this uh, with the expansion pack or non-guide bush? So we're running this in non-guide bush mode, so we're using the full stroke, I think it's 80 mil stroke, uh, using the full stroke and still managing to hold the tolerance. With the, the LFV, the, the chips are coming off nice and small, so uh, we're getting our damage down the, uh, down the length of the part and save the customer really happy. And I'm just thinking, though, without the guide or the expansion pack, normally you can only go the short, stubby parts, but you can go up to about three times D? Yeah, three times diameter is a rule of thumb. Um, so, I mean, this is, I think, 30 mil bar, so we, we could, you know, we could go 90. But we've done some parts on there, 20 mil bar, and we're still managing to get 70 mil um, on there, so we've just about three and a half times D. Okay, so, I mean, it's a great problem to have. So the LFE, then, essentially running for 500, 500 batch, and the only issue is the, the bars run out. Yeah, bar, bars run out, or the, the catch pan's not big enough. So, yeah, you come in in the morning and you've got parts on the floor, so we have to look at different ways to get them parts out of the machine because making nice parts like this, such a good finish, it shows up if they get uh, damaged when they come off. So, great problem to have. Let's have a quick chat about the machine, though. Yeah. I mean, first of all, the actual working envelope, the door is huge. Yeah, it's nice to be able to, you know, say, get in these machines. So, you know, we've got some, uh, some smaller, we've had some smaller sliders in the past and they're quite crammed, whereas this is uh, it's almost getting towards a fixed edge with uh, access so we can get in there front and back, um, get, get access to all the tools. And there's a back door on there, which is great to get on the, uh, the tools around the back. Okay, now in terms of tooling, driven tooling front and back end? Yeah, so we've got, um, I think, four on the front with an option to put the arm in there with a uh, manual B axis, so we can go up to um, seven. And we've got five live tools on the back. And then we've got the three uh, deep hole drilling tools next to the sub-spindle to get a few extra tools in there. Okay, so it gives you that total flexibility in terms of man parts yeah. you're manufacturing? Definitely, yes. Um, we, we use uh, on quite a few parts where you need a bit extra length on the drills so you can get in uh, next to your sub spindle, uh, providing you haven't got any clashes with your back working tools, but you can get quite deep. We've, we've drilled 180 mil on there. Oh, right. Impressive stuff. Yeah. Now, when you say any clashes, does that tie in with the controls you're using as well? Uh, yes, yeah, so it basically you just have to watch the interference zones. So, you, I mean, you can turn the interference zones off, uh, but. <laughs> But obviously, you've got to just be careful with the um, when the, your sub spindle comes over to eject normally. Um, now, you've got the Mitsubishi controls. I understand you're a big fan of them as well. Yeah, I learned on Mitsubishi control many years ago, but it's, I think it's a great control with the pictorial aids and the uh, tool setting and the geometry. It's really good visual aids. Now, just going back to the LFE, we, I mean, people know, out there know that you're taking this off and chipping it essentially, yeah. but you've also got the, the well, medium pressure coolant as well. Why is that? Yeah, so this, this particular model's only got the uh, LFV on the uh, main spindle. So we basically put, put medium pressure coolant on there, which is 80 bar, just basically for clearing any swarf on the back working tools. So if we're doing any deep drilling or turning on there, particularly in aluminiums and stainless, we can uh, get rid of any swarf accumulations. Greg, that's it, a great little overview of the, of the machine and why I used it. And Citizen, giving you a bit of a problem, but not a bad one. No, good problem, definitely, yes. Yeah. So uh, if it carries on, we'll be definitely getting more.